Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of CUDA Crash Course. My name is Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and today we're going to do our uh, first optimization step for that sum reduction algorithm that we looked at last time. So if you're unfamiliar, let's go ahead and continue on. So this is what we were looking at last time. So what we're trying to do is take a big long vector of n elements and we want to squish it down to a single result. So we're going to add up all of the elements inside of that vector and get left at the very end with just a single element. So this is, uh, again, like we said last time, an embarrassingly parallel type, uh, type task. And the reason is it doesn't matter in which order we add uh, the elements in in each step. So we can split them up. So we can have one thread do uh, the first two elements, have another thread do the next two elements, and so on. So the first thing that we did, or our kind of naive implementation, we did the very intuitive thing. So exactly the way that this is mapped out as far as which threads correspond to which uh, entries inside of our vector. So zero would add, uh, thread zero would add elements zero and one, Thread two would act uh, would uh, add elements two and three, and then we'd always use the specific thread that's tied to that index, right? Even in these later reduction steps, uh, when we start adding these partial sums together until we get a final sum. Now, there's something inherently kind of messy here, and that's that one thing is we're not really utilizing our threads that well. We see that we have all these gaps here. So we have thread one here doing nothing for the entire algorithm. Same thing with thread three, thread five, thread seven, basically all of the even threads. The other problem we had is if we actually go into the code, which we'll show in just a second, we did something that's not very uh, performance friendly. And that's that our calculation used the modulo operator. So that's actually kind of an expensive operation in GPUs. So we'd like to avoid it if we can. And we see that with this first optimization, we can actually completely get rid of that and we can use sequential threads. So we, we really help out on this idea of warp divergence. So that's when we have different threads in a warp doing different things. So in this case, only half of our threads in a warp are ever active at once. So we can fix that. And, the re and how we fix that is with this slightly different version. So what if we just said, uh, instead of having uh, uh, obeying completely by, you know, whatever element you are inside of the vector is what thread you use, what if we always used sequential threads? So in this case, thread zero, thread one, all the way through thread seven in this case, and then down here, thread zero through three, zero and one, and then just zero for the last step. So in this case, we don't have this problem of warp divergence because uh, we're always using sequential threads. We're not having to mask off threads in the warp. Now we will see later on that there are still problems with this, namely in terms of we still have these gaps down here. And we can see how this can lead to things like shared memory bank conflicts as well as it still has the problem of after every iteration, a lot of our threads are just idle. So we'll see if we can pack some more work in there. So let's go ahead and jump into the code for today. So as a reminder, here's our diverged case or warp divergence case. So how did we figure out which threads would be working each cycle? So it was pretty simple. We would multiply two times the stride. So initially our stride is one. So it would be every, uh, we would just figure out if it's uh, say an even thread at first. So in the first one only thread zero, two, four, eight, and then our stride would multiply equal times two. So then it would be every fourth and then every eighth and then every 16th thread. So how do we change this in order to get sequential threads and then also avoid this uh, modulo operation that we said is kind of expensive. Now in this case, we can go ahead and jump straight to the code. All the code uh, from the main function is identical. The only thing we change is this inner part right here. Uh, specifically, just this comparison right here. So instead of what we did up here, which is uh, where we would you have to use this modulo operation, what we instead did 
is we calculate, calculated this index that's 2 times s times the thread idx. And what we did is we just checked to see if the index is less than the block dimension. So uh, instead of you know trying to figure out whether or not uh, it's an odd or an even thread, in this case, we're just making sure that uh, our thread times the stride times two is not going to jump off. So uh, jump off the thread block. So we want to stick to our little tile. And so in this case, how do we uh, actually index this? So it's just going to be the index, which is this uh, term right here, plus the stride. So let's just run through a couple of these quick. So on the first iteration of this loop, our stride is going to be uh, one. And then our th let's just look at the first two threads. So thread zero will be zero times this. So it'll just be zero. And it will add together, index will be zero plus s, which is going to be uh, in this case, just one. So we'll add together elements of zero and one. And so let's look at thread one now. So originally when we use the modulo operator, uh, thread, uh, thread one would never get into that if statement. Now instead, thread one will be one times one times two. So this will be two. Now here will be index will be two plus s is one. So now thread one will add elements. Uh, yeah, thread one will add elements uh, 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 two in this case. So index is two plus two plus one, three. So thread zero adds zero and one, thread one adds two and three, thread three would add four and five and so on. And then when we upped the stride, uh, everything would just shift over like we saw in that uh, in that original slide. So let's just pull that up back up for a second. So here's that original slide. So here, index is zero and one, index is two and three. And now when everything shifts over, it's still thread one, but now it's moved over and it's going to be uh, moved over by four now instead of by two. Okay. So let's go ahead and build this. And we'll go ahead and collect some performance numbers. Just as a quick comparison to show why this is an important performance uh, thing to do, to care about, why should we care about uh, warp divergence as far as utilization goes, and why we should even more importantly care about removing expensive operations that have to occur a lot. So we'll do start performance analysis. Here we go, profile launch. Okay, it launched our two kernels. There we go. So let's go to our launches. Okay, so it looks like it took us 17 milliseconds. Now let's go ahead and close this project. So we don't really need to worry about the second kernel launch. The second kernel is just that final reduction step. So that should really kind of take the same amount of time. We, what we really care about is that, uh, that first one, that's going to be our uh, meteor kernel. So in this case, it's four times, it runs four times longer. So the, the time is really dictated by that first reduction. So let's go ahead and close out of this. And we'll go ahead and open another project. We'll open up our original one. Let's actually just uh, close this project. And we'll open up our diverged case. Let's rebuild it. So remember, we got 17 milliseconds for that first kernel and uh, our slightly optimized one where we got rid of that modulo operation. Now let's see what happens when you run this one. So we'll start performance analysis, profile, launch. Okay. So here we go. So it's actually almost double in time. So while the other one that we got rid of the warp divergence and we got, uh, yeah, we got rid of the warp divergence and we also got rid of that modulo operation, took 17 milliseconds and about three milliseconds for the second kernel. Uh, this one took 33 milliseconds, so over double uh, or just about double 
uh, our optim our slightly optimized kernel, and then it also saved about you know a little less than double on the small kernel as well. So tackling things like warp divergence as far as uh, making sure that all of our threads are you know marching along together instead of really diverged is important, as well as getting rid of unnecessary expensive operators like that modulo operation. As always, if we go to the GitHub page at uh, github.com slash coffee before arch, if it will go ahead and load, apparently it's going to install some updates for me. Here we go. And we'll go ahead and go to GitHub. So all of this code is available at github.com slash coffee before arch. If we go to my profile, go to CUDA programming, links to all the previous videos are down here as well as the associated files. So we looked at some reduction bank conflicts. So in this case, we'll see in another video that we can further optimize this. Remember, we're going to go through kind of six optimizations on this naive kernel. So stick around if you want to maybe, you know, get this from 2x improvement to 20x or 30x improvement. So here's our kernel that we went through today and our entire function that does this. Uh, so feel free to check this out, download it, run it for yourself. As always, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and I hope you had a nice day.